Hello traders and welcome to part three of our ExoCharts desktop pro video series. So in today's video, we are going to be covering this left hand toolbar here. So this is where you have all of your drawing tools available to you from your volume profiles uh, to your VWAPs to your Fibonacci retracements, trend lines and so on. We're also going to be covering how you can add volume profiles onto uh, the left and the right hand side of your charts, including a depth of market profile that you can add onto this. Uh, we will be showing you how you can uh, get your markers on here so you can see the markers here on the right hand side and also we're going to be explaining how you can get your chart from looking like a standard candlestick chart into a TPO chart market profile chart which is what you can see in front of you here so um as always please do uh, click like and subscribe on the video and let's get started Okay, so the chart you see in front of you here is one of my standard trading templates. Okay, this is the Taurus TPO that I've made a bit more funky colors. You've got some additional stuff on here, but we do have the simplified version of this template available to the public. So if you do visit tauruscrypto.com, go over onto our website here, then you can join our Discord by clicking the uh, the little Discord icon up at the top here or scrolling down and you will see our free Discord community. Once you're on the Discord, you will be able to navigate your way through to the trading help section within our public area and within there you will see a pinned post that is all of the um, templates the four templates that we have shared five templates now that we have shared uh, within this series so far that are available for anyone to download so um, please do go and, and check that out if you haven't already downloaded them and uh, yeah you'll be able to get something that looks a little bit like what you see on the chart here but a, a slightly more simplified version without all of the extra stuff however what we are going to do today is to explain how you can take your chart from looking like something very basic and turn it into this so first of all let's take this chart away here and let's just add in our starter template okay so again we do have the starter template available for everyone and you can see this is just a standard candlestick chart so what we're going to start to do here is we'll just do like we did on the previous video where we're explaining all kind of the technical stuff and the indicators we're going to go from uh, top to bottom here and just explain each little tab that you have available and how you can use it on your charts so the first thing you'll see on the left hand side here is your object tree. Now if I open that up at the moment it's going to be empty but this is basically where it'll display anything that you've added to your chart. So the lines, the Fibonacci's, VWAPs and that kind of thing. You'll be able to easily manage each of those elements from here on the left hand side once we've done that. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, let's just go for one tab down and let's add on the line tool. So next down there is line tool. Okay, So let's just quickly connect uh, these two wicks together for example. And as usual with all of these, double click to open up the settings and you can see here you've got gradient that you can add to it, you can change the thickness of it, um, you can make it dashed or, or kind of straight line or dotted or anything like this. Um, you can extend it to the right, you can extend it to the left, you can add an arrow to the right, you can add an arrow to the left, you can lock it in place so then if you do click and drag it won't let you. So a nice little handy feature. Then you've got all these presets here, so line is a line, then you've got your ray. You've got your X line, which goes left to right. You've got your arrow. You've got support zone, which is standard as a green gradient. You've got the resistance zone, which is a red gradient. And then you can go back here, reset. Uh, if you have any defaults that you want to set on here, you can do that. And then you've got the remove button as well. So if you want to just remove it from your chart, you just double click and remove. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Again, we can just draw this on. And then if we do go back onto the object tree now, you'll see that you've got the line here, okay? And you have the options there to, to lock it. You have the options to make it visible or hidden. You have the option to delete it. And the, then you have the option of settings here. So if you can delete it from the object tree as well. Uh, next up, we have the Fibonacci tool. Okay, so again, we'll draw from our low down here to our high. Remember Fibonacci always drawing from your left to your right. And then this gives you the standard support resistance zones. If you double click again, once again, we do have standard kind of templates on here. So you've got default, you've got the full one, you've got the Taurus golden zone, Fibonacci, classic, classic mono, classic mini. Okay, so various little settings on here. You can adjust these much the same as you would on TradingView. Um, okay, you can uh, add the trend line onto it. You can add the prices onto it. Okay, you can once again, dashed, uh, dotted, that kind of thing, make it thicker, change the colors through here, uh, change the background of it if you would like to have a background on there, extend right, extend left, uh, you can put the text on the other side, and once again, lock it so you can't move it around. Okay, so there's that one, um, reset takes it back to normal, and then remove. 
So beneath your Fibonacci retracement, you have your linear regression channel, lin reg channel. Okay, now this is a really useful tool. Whereas your trend lines and your Fibonacci's are pretty much household names within trading, everyone knows what they are. Uh, the linear regression channel is a little bit different. So what this basically is, is it's a tool for identifying where you're likely to see support and resistance and like exhaustion of certain moves. So it acts a little bit like a VWAP, um, but it just smooths out all the data that you're seeing here. So as you drag this along, you can see as we're moving this along and dragging through, you can see how this um, channel is following the price action. And a lot of the time it's containing the price action within it. And you can see if we just drag it to the end, how it's acting quite nicely as support and resistance, both uh, resistance up above and support when it comes down to the lows here. So this is really cool. Um, and if it consists of basically, yeah, three lines here. So you've got your linear aggression line, which is taking the the significant points of data from within here and we'll just go double click on this in a minute and then two standard deviations so you have your standard deviation above your standard deviation below now these are calculated depending on the range and the volatility you've got so you can see as you're dragging it along it gets wider as it's kind of bringing together more price action so if we double click on this again we can see the the various presets that we have available mini channel single ray these kind of things okay set it back to default you can change the colors you can do all the usual stuff with this and then what the important thing on here is uh, looking at your standard deviations so this is just your linear regression and what we are looking at here is the point of control okay so what this is doing this single line is taking together all the points of control from your start point to your end point and just giving you a smoothed out average of all of those bits of data together so it's adding each point of control and giving you an average as a straight line the whole way along your standard deviations show you where there's likely to be support and resistance based on the volatility and the range that you've had within that um the range that you've chosen so again if you do just zoom out you can see as you start to add in more data this widens out because you're getting more uh, price action within there you're getting further distances between your points of control and um, therefore acting a little bit like say like a VWAP or a moving average or even kind of like a Bollinger Band thing when you're looking at, at kind of the volatility that you've got within certain areas okay so a really useful tool for identifying support and resistance and when you're seeing moves that are maybe a little bit overextended a little bit overbought a little bit oversold and you can just see the respect that this has been having even just recently just randomly drawing this onto onto the chart here the respect that this does get then while this is calculated via the point of control you can also change that to your value area low value area high uh, value low um, value area high divided by two you open your high your low your close open close high low open high low close divided by four so making it a bit more like a vwap or something like that so i would definitely recommend checking this out uh trying the different settings on here point of control is a really nice one uh also the close is quite a nice one it is well if you're if you're taking um all of the closes into account and just giving yourself a nice average for that it does end up being a really nice um just basically be able to find support and resistance along the way so do check it out it's a really really good tool this one <laughs> below linear regression is a rectangle so nice and easy okay there's your rectangle double click on it um you can have the different green zone support red zone resistance dashed blue you have all the various options for this you can reset it just to, to standard on here you can drag it around you can kind of do whatever you want with it you can yeah self-explanatory okay it's just a rectangle and then it's got all the usual things that all the other the menus have had on there so just remove that uh, after the rectangle anchored vwap so anchored vwap really really nice so as you do this like similar to your linear regression channel okay what this is doing is giving you an averaged out of the price action for each of the candles and you can just see how price is going along and creating a nice smooth line uh, finding support and resistance along the way so this is a little bit more complex okay so this is added in to quite a few major key points so your VWAPs are really useful from like a session to session basis or if you're anchoring it from like a, a low or a high to use like an anchored VWAP on here so if we do double click on this this has got quite a lot of information within it um, I'm not going to go over like so much uh, examples of this but you can go through here you can see the different uh, settings that we've got so this is one that I've done which is basically looking at what the bigger traders are doing in comparison to the smaller traders so it's really nice to be able to find that okay if your bigger traders are 
um, their average price that they have been trading at within a range is slightly lower to what the, the smaller traders are doing, then you can see maybe this is looking at something a bit more of like a distribution that's in effect. And if you've got the bigger traders that are, are kind of pushing price higher and their average price is higher than what the rest of the market is in com general kind of comparison, then you can see that we're looking at more of like a markup or accumulation type phase within uh, within price itself here. So a nice little, that's just a, a preset that I've added on here. You can do it as VWAP only. So again, if you're not wanting to have it too complicated and have all these other lines, then you've got VWAP only. You can have it as CVD only. So this is just showing you the cumulative volume delta within the price range that you're looking at. So obviously the more green it gets, meaning that there's more buying going on. So the, the lighter the shade of green, the more buying there is. So you can quite easily see where there's divergences where you're saying, okay, maybe a lot more green going on here, a lot more buying but price not being able to take out prior highs, that kind of example on here. You can do it as VWAP plus CVD. Uh, you can just make it mono. And um, then I've got, yeah, other little things on here as well. So if we just go back onto the default, what this gives you is your VWAP um, line itself. So the volume rated average price. Again, I do have a video that is explaining exactly what that is. Uh, you have your volume up and your volume down. Um, so okay if if price was to come down here and you're starting to go below the average then you'd see that you've got your cvd color on here uh you've got different trade sizes so back with the previous video uh just explaining how you can you can calculate and, and change these trade sizes so we're just looking here at each one of these lines representing a different group of traders so you've got the really big traders here trading with size of 333k and above and then you've got the smaller traders here trading with size of 39k and below and you can you can change that on uh, the settings that i've shown you in previous videos uh there's a really nice one here so as you if you've only dra dragged this along like part way you can just click anchor to last and that brings you all the way up to current price action and then that will continue on with the the price action there same kind of things lock it um dash those types of stuff on here so uh yeah vwap's a great one it's part of like my everyday trading strategy i trade the vwap a lot so definitely check that one out as well below your vwap you have another really useful tool so this is your dynamic profile so again let's do a click and drag so from the left here let's start to take in all of this price action and you can see much like a, on a fixed range on trading view you start to get this profile that's built but this has a lot more information within it and is a lot more customizable okay so you can see here a standard delta profile where you've got your red where there's more sellers than buyers you've got your blue where there's more buyers than sellers and you can see the candle basically taking all of this data and turning it into like one candle itself with your open your close or current price your high and your low on here and then you have your statistics you're looking at your volume your cvd your open interest and even the amount of liquidations that have occurred within this range and then of course the percentage and the the actual range of uh what you have highlighted itself so again let's double click on this let's change this so for example turn it into a volume profile turn the text into a volume and you can see here how this changes into a standard volume profile here you can turn it into let's say a delta cluster uh, which is really nice so you can actually come through and you can see very clearly where you're getting um, maybe trapped longs trapped shorts where you're getting major imbalances on the market um, which is really cool as you're coming down to price it's uh, very useful to, to be able to see that kind of stuff uh, let's just move this back on to um let's make it a volume profile just so it's easier to see again you can then change the candle so color candle okay this will take it from the side and just so you're filling up the whole box here you can have it as an embed which is just again back onto the left hand side and you're just taking your open price and the, the current price or the close price of this you can change your value area uh, you can change the opacity of those value areas you can show your point of control um the info short numbers uh, then you have your tick settings okay so at the moment we're synced to chart so this is uh, showing as 100 tick now if I was to change that to one tick what you'll notice on here is it doesn't actually immediately change even though it's synced to chart but just uh, give it a little nudge quickly and then that will immediately reset that once again if I want to change that to 20 tick you can see it's not reset just yet but give it a little nudge and there you go it resets it for you uh, but what you can also do on here and so instead of syncing to chart you can then have the numbers itself so let's say i wanted to do 200 tick and i wanted to take in a lot of data then you can see here there's all of the 200 ticks so basically 100 increments um that you're looking at here and all the volume that has been traded within that 
Then of course the usual kind of settings on there and you can save your own presets for whichever volume profiles or whichever kind of um, uh, dynamic profiles that you are looking at. So yep, that is that one. Let's remove that. And finally, of course, you do just have the measure tool here down at the bottom. So this very simply, almost like the box that you were seeing at the top earlier, you've got this as just showing you the whole range itself. So you can see the percentage move that you've had, 11.4% here from your low to your high. You can see the dates in which that occurred. So you can see that it started at 2 p.m. Um, on at midnight, sorry, on March the 14th and is running all the way through to March the 17th at 9.30 p.m. Uh, you can see that you've got the volume, you've got CVD open interest, again, same kind of thing, high low, uh, the amount of shorts and the full range on there. So this is just the measurement tool just for getting your measurements. Okay, so that is all of the tools here that are currently available on the left hand side. So now we've got those tools out the way, we can start to look at the additional profiles that you can add to your chart. So these are volume profiles, depth of market, and turning your chart into something like a TPO chart. Okay, and also the marker settings that you can get here on the, the left and the right hand side. So let's just add on first of all, so you have your composite profile left and your composite profile right. Let's just quickly click on that and you click show CPL. And let's click on the second one and show CPR. And you can see how it brings in these two profiles. Now, if you do want to extend these out, you can just, uh, it's a case of just clicking and dragging, but this is set data. So of course, if you're if you're pulling in, you can't like pull in data like you got on your dynamic range. Uh, so if we do click on the settings for this, then you can see on the, the one on the left-hand side, so this being your CPL, we're looking at a daily, the developing day volume profile. Okay, so if you want to change that to a developing week volume profile, then you can change that on here. You can change this to say a delta profile. You can look at your previous week. So basically this is taking set data rather than like choosing by clicking and dragging. So this is only looking at all of the data that was last week. In this instance, uh, or if we're looking at the developing week, this is all the data that has currently been traded within this week. So yeah, say, same kind of thing. You're looking at a volume profile or a delta profile, but it's taking like set data and you have to set that from these uh, options here. You can change your data source. You can change the ses session times if you want to, and you can show choose to show or not show your POC. So you can see here, it's very uh, small, but you can see the point of control um, flicking on and off. You can see the value area course flicking on and off as you as you change that okay and then finally the the settings you can add a candle onto this um you can show info hide info um you can flip it so it's mirrored like that and uh just changing the width this way so uh change that to 500 or something like like you'd have with dragging it sorry made it remove it but you can change it that way uh, then if we go over to the uh, the right hand side, okay, so if we go on to the CPR, again, you can change the, the data for this one. So at the moment, we're looking at a live DOM. So this is the depth of market. So this is the order book basically moving around. So if we do zoom in on this, you can see here is your order book. And here is all the, the figures of everything that's there. So you can see 1.4 million bids currently, uh, obviously always changing. It's very dynamic. Um, you can change that to dual. So you're looking at basically the bid ask on here uh you can change it to a cluster so then the shading rather than the the kind of length in which the the bars are going across and all of that kind of stuff on there okay so again you can you can choose various different settings for this you can um yeah the, the same as what we just shown on the other side okay so that gives you your your depth of market with your volume profile over here and then we have the markers. Okay, so if we go show markers, once again, what this is showing you is your set markers for previous days, previous weeks, all of this kind of thing. Again, I'm just gonna skim over these very quickly. So enable the markers, markers on top of the chart, the last price, okay, so very simple. This just shows you the marker for the last price. You're looking at developing day, so you've got your value area high, your point of control, your value area low, your high of the day, your low of the day, your open for the day, and your EQ, which is the midpoint between your high and your low. Okay, so this is, um, you can add those onto there, and what you can see here is the current day, where your value area high is, where your daily open was. Coming all the way up here, you'd be able to see, if we do click it on, we can see the high up here with this wick. Okay, so showing you the markers, giving you really nice levels for scalping, good levels for finding support and resistance. Go through previous day, Okay, so if you're looking at something like the 80% setup, 
again, got a video on that, <laughs> then you can uh, use these marker settings for that. You can change the tick size on here. I personally quite like 20 tick for this on the um, on the daily. So I did used to use a lower tick size, but in order to smooth out the data somewhat, somewhat and find something that just gives really nice set levels between, especially if you're looking at a TPO chart, Increasing that tick size a little bit does help to give you slightly more accurate results. Okay, but you can play around with that depending on the strategy that it is you use. Developing week, um, previous week, developing month, previous month. Okay, so it's the same kind of things. You're looking at your value area high, your point of control, your value area low, your high, your low, your EQ, and uh, and so on for each of these time zones. And once again, you've got the, the tick size on there. Okay. So yeah, fairly self-explanatory and it, it very much depends on what your, your own personal preference is when you're adding these onto your chart. Now, the final one on here is your TPO. Okay, so if I do click enable TPO, first thing to note is a TPO chart is a 30 minute chart. Uh, that is how it is traditionally. And that was how I would always recommend using it. You can do it on other timeframes, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. A TPO should be a 30 minute time frame. Again, I do have content that explains this in a lot more detail. You will have to check out my YouTube channel uh, to find the TPO um, charts for this. We're just going to skim over this and have a look at it itself. Okay, so if we do go enable TPO, it suddenly makes things look awfully different, right? Okay, so it's changed our candles into a big profile like this. Okay, now what this is showing um, is each one of these blocks being dependent on your tick size. So in this case, 50 tick, uh, 20 tick. So if we do change that to 50 tick, this being 50 tick, so $25 worth of price, and this being a, a half hour period. So this starts to give you a profile that shows you how much time um, price has spent at each one of these price points. So within each $25 range, how much time has been set, spent within there. So if price moves through um, a price, uh, during a half hour period, it will print a TPO, a time price opportunity within that, and it will start to fill out a profile like this. Again, not giving you loads of information on this because I'm aware that I have to get this through this video quickly and it's just showing you how to set this up. Okay, so there's loads and loads of settings on here. Okay, you can add tons of stuff. You can change the, the look of things just from here on the um, on the left hand side. So you can change it to basically looking like Delta where you're, each of these are going across. Um, you can do it as a heat map. So looking at where more time is spent during, uh, during the day as we're going along, you can show your letters, you can hide your letters, uh, you can expand them out as well. So then from this profile, this starts to show you a little bit more about what this really means. So here you can see half hour period, half hour period, all of these moving along and these basically being the candles. Okay. So these are 30 minute candles without taking into account your your um, your wicks or anything like that. It's just all of the data within that 30 minute period. And then what the profile itself does, what the TPO does is it compacts that into one profile itself. So it stacks all of them together, like you were seeing with the text here, um, being able to stack all of this data together there. So if I do go expand text and close the clusters up again, you can see how price is moving given different uh, half hour periods being given a different letter and that starts to move along and then you stack it back into a profile on the side here. Once again, point of control. Um, and <laughs> there's so many settings on here that uh, I will just uh, go through some of the important ones. Okay, so you've seen how to, to change the, um, the clusters and expand them and, and contract them again. You can do that on here. So you can do that via your settings by double clicking. You can change the colors. You can choose your point of control and, and value area. Now, what I tend to use is volume for VA POC calculation. So what the current point of control and value area is um, set at is the amount of time that is spent at a certain price. But if you want to look at volume as well, and if you want to take your point of control as a, from a volume basis, which I like to do, you just click on this and this shows you the... Um, the price which has had the most volume within uh, the session itself. So the reason why this is nice is the time one is obvious because of course, if you're spending more time at a certain level, you are gonna get more of these profiles stacked and it's gonna be very clear on the profile itself that either this or this is your time point of control. Whereas your volume one, 
can change quite drastically, okay? Uh, you can split it into sessions. So again, if you do have sessions set and you want to change it from your, like your New York Open, your London Open, uh, rather than this being a whole day, which is what this is, is basically starting at midnight and runs for the whole day, giving you a profile for the day as a whole, then you can split it into sessions here. Uh, your initial balance, which is the first one hour of trading as standard. Okay, so the first two um, half hour periods that are on here. So if we do just go back, expand clusters, and you can see one, two half hour periods, that gives you your initial balance for the day. Once again here, one, two half hour periods, giving your, you your initial balance uh, for the day. And actually, <laughs> this is actually uh, set a little bit differently. So this was showing... Um, my mistake there. Uh, your initial balance, as I interpret it, would be uh, one hour of trading, so two profiles. So you just got to be careful if you are using that. Um, this had it set as I turned it on as number of uh, first candles for initial balance as just set as one. So that's only taking into account one half hour period. I like to have it on two. Okay, that's traditionally how it would be as one hour of trading, two profiles. But you can change that. You can have it basically whatever you like if you have a strategy for that um you can extend the lines okay uh you can show the background you can extend these on so you've got naked ones which is basically ones that haven't been back tested okay and it's the same as what you can do on your point of control okay so you can show uh your uh, naked point of control ray so again you can see the poc previous day point of control moving along here and has not been tested okay uh we have single prints and tails on here so single prints are where you only have price moving through a region for just one um one of those half hour periods so if we do look back over here you can see single prints being formed here as you get price just moving down quite quickly within this session and it's only giving like only at one period of time did price move through this area so again that shows that there's potential inefficiencies within the chart there uh, that you do need to be aware of and that often acts as a magnet for price for support and resistance and nice scalping levels as you are going along so you can see here single prints form you break through what happens when you come back into it it gets rejected and you move down okay so really nice examples there then you have your buying tails and your selling tails. So your buying tail being the the extent of the move down. So where you have a, a, a tail basically to the profile uh, that is where you have only one single um, period of time in which the price has moved into that <clears throat> for the day. So like a single print, but just at the highs and the lows of the chart. Your selling tail being the, the extremes of the selling. So the inefficiencies up at the high, the excess up at the high okay uh settings for that again on here and um, you have your volume profile so if we just go back to where we are here you can see the volume profile within this one so you can turn that on and off okay so this showing you the volume throughout the day various settings on here you can change it to uh delta and um you can change the text type and all those kind of things then you have your statistics, see what your, the amount of counts on the TPO, the amount of volume within it, and so on. Then you have more statistics here that are on the side, so you can see your point of control. For example, and you can start to add more of these on. So if you want uh, the second one, you want to show the total volume. Okay, that's showing you the total volume for that, um, the session that you're on. You can go rotation factor, you can go, uh profile open so you can see the the daily open on here which it shows you and so on so yeah tons of stuff within the tpo and this again it does deserve a whole video in itself i do have a video on this uh it's about a almost a year ago since i recorded that so it, again it's one of those that maybe a full uh tpo market profile explanation will be needed in the near future but just to brush over the topic uh hopefully Again, that was useful just for you to see how to how to get that set up on the chart and give you some of the basics to start using. Then um, finally, uh, without making this a really long video, once again, we're just going to go over these uh, on on here. So within this, this just gives you uh, if we turn off the TPO, 
and we just go back onto a chart that's like this. Okay. And we just start to standardize things a little bit more. You can choose, um, how you're showing your point of control again, using these settings down here. So these just basically being little additional settings that you have. So you can fill in your point of control from here. You can show your value area. So this is for each candle. Uh, so depending on how you have the chart set up, you have these additional options uh, to show your value area high, your value area low, your point of control. Uh, you can show the volume, which then appears down at the bottom. Okay, so your volume coming through like volume for each candle rather than looking at volume for price. This shows at the bottom here. Uh, you then have your trade count. Okay, so let's just remove the volume. Then you can see the trade count. So this is the amount of sellers and the amount of buyers within that um, time period or candle itself. You have wrecked. So wrecked liquidations, um, wrecked bubbles are your liquidations. You can see all these liquidations occurring and you can choose again within the settings on here. You can see how much, um, how many people have been liquidated within any move on the chart. And then finally you have candle statistics. Okay. So if you're looking at this 30 minute candles, you can see that it's had 78 million volume and 13 million Delta. Once again, all of these things have settings on there. Um, but it's fairly self-explanatory again on, on what these will mean. Okay. So I think that, uh, that wraps up everything that is available here on this left-hand side. Um, I will end the video there again. I hope you did enjoy the video. I'm sorry that on a few of the things I did have to skim over it all quite quickly. I didn't want this video to be like a, a 10 hour long lecture. There is so much stuff to cover in this. It really is amazing. The amount of, um, the amount of amazing information, like just look at what you can do to a chart from getting it to, from basically where did we start off with? Okay. We were all the way back here and we've turned our chart from what it just looked like then. Um, and it was originally something like this. Okay. So it really is, uh, almost endless, the possibilities that you can do with this software. So I really do hope that this gave you a nice overview of just the general, uh, tools that are available for you on this. So yeah. Thank you very much once again for watching this video. Um, the next part of this, we will be going more into a little bit more detail on some of the tools available and going more into strategies. And I hope that this has given you more of an understanding of uh, the platform itself and that you have found this useful overall. So thank you very much for watching. I will catch you in the next video and have a great day. Cheers. Bye.